Well, praise God, it is good to be in God's house this morning. Yes. Amen. Yes. Are you glad you're in church? Yes. <laughs> We've had a good time this morning. I tell you what, feel the presence of the Lord. Had a wonderful time singing the old hymns and praying together. Beautiful special, I need thee every hour. Yes. Amen. And it really ties right into the message this morning. We're continuing on our Signs for the Time series. And this morning, I want us to turn in our Bibles to Psalm chapter 42. And we're going to read just the first verse, Psalm chapter 42, verse 1. We would ask that you stand if you are able as we read Psalm chapter 42, verse 1. As the deer, or as the heart, panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. I'll read it one more time. As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after after thee, O God. Let us pray. O Father in heaven, we give you thanks this morning and praise for all your goodness to us, your love, your mercy, and your grace, all so undeserved, yet you continually bless us with your wonderful and rich blessings. Father in heaven, I stand here this morning and I know full well I need your help this morning. Father in heaven, we don't need to hear from Pastor Kimball this morning. We need to hear from you. So that is my desire. I ask you, Lord, anoint these lips of clay to preach your words and your words only. I ask that you would Give us all eyes to see and ears to hear what you are saying this morning. Speak to our hearts, O Holy Spirit of God. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Beside me here is a sign that we have probably all seen. It's a common road sign, especially in the mountains or out in the country. It indicates a likelihood that deer could cross and is intended as a warning. Well, not long ago, I was driving in the mountains and I saw this sign. And the moment I saw this sign, a text came to mind, this text that we just read this morning. As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. Of course, a heart is a deer. And there's a popular chorus that's been around churches for many years now, as the deer panteth for the water. It was written by a man named Martin Nystrom. And Martin, Martin Nystrom related the following account of the, I guess, the birth of this favorite song, worship song. And I want to read to you some of this interview. In 1984, he said, I was a school teacher in Seattle, and since I had the summer off, I decided to go back to Bible college, but only for the summer term. I headed for Dallas and Christ for the Nation's Institute. <clears throat> Little did I know what was about to happen to me, especially with all that I would be exposed to and the worship emphasis of that school. And I've been to Dallas many times. You know, we're from Texas. And we'll pass, whenever I went to preach in Dallas, often we would pass by Christ for the nations. Well, he went to that school. And he said he had a roommate at at Christ for the Nations, who was a very vibrant Christian. And i got to pause here and say, we should all be very vibrant Christians, shouldn't we? I mean, it should just come with it, right? 
His roommate was a vibrant Christian, and he challenged me to go on a fast, a period of time when a person refrains from eating solid food in order to give himself to reading the Bible, meditation, devotions, and prayer. Hmm. So he said, I took up the challenge. And on the 19th day of the fast, I found myself sitting at a piano trying to write a song. I was simply playing chord progressions when I noticed the Bible on the music stand of the piano. It was open to Psalm chapter 42, what we just read. My eyes fell on the verse of that chapter. As the heart or deer panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. After reading the verse, I began to sing its message just right off the page. I wrote the first verse and the chorus of the song pretty much just straight right out. The whole of the adventure was completed in a matter of minutes. I then repeated the song that I had just written. I wanted to seal it in my mind. I've done that too. When I come up with a song that I think is good, got to repeat it, you know. A lot of songwriters will do that, and musicians. Now, I don't want to forget this, so let's do it again. They'll record it maybe on their phone. So he repeated it. And the words are, as the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. It's a beautiful song. And then the chorus, You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You alone are my heart's desire. You alone. And I long to worship thee. And it goes on, I love you more than gold or silver, only you can satisfy. You alone are the real joy giver and the apple of my eye. You're my friend and you're my brother, even though you are a king. I love you more than any other, so much more than anything. I had no intention of showing the song to anyone. It was just for me, my own devotional time with the Lord. However, before leaving the school to go back to Seattle, I did share it with one person, David Butterball. He introduced it to the students of the school, and it became a favorite. Since that introduction of the song, it's been translated into several languages, and is often sung in other countries. Orchestras have used it. It's been sung in unusually different styles as well. Martin continues to write songs and travel extensively, teaching and worship conferences. And back in the 90s, he remembers one, one time in particular that just blew him away. Back in the 1990s, he walked into a stadium where there were 100,000 people wow. singing his song. How that must have felt. As the deer panteth for the water. As the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. You alone are my heart's desire. And I long to worship thee. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone may my spirit yield. You desire 
and I long to worship you. Psalm 42, verse 1, again, as the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? He loves God. My tears have been my meat day and night while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? When I remember these things, I, I pour out my soul in me. For I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise, with the multitude that kept holy day. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God. For I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. O oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and from the Hermonites, from the hill Mizar. Deep calleth unto deep at the noise of thy water spouts. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and in the night his song shall be with me, and my prayer unto God, the God of my life. I will say unto God, my rock, why hast thou, not, why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? Have you ever been there where it seems like God isn't there? He's there, but it seems like he's not there in our sorrow, and our distress. But he's there. Yeah. As with a sword in my bones, mine enemies reproach me, while they say daily unto me, Where is thy God? Why art thou cast down, O my soul, and why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health, the health of my countenance and my God. God was on David's mind, I think, almost all the time. He loved him very much, greatly. His desire was God. His desire was God. And there were times when it seemed like God wasn't there. And in those times, he was very sorrowful. Sometimes God gives us valleys. Sometimes he does, not because he's trying to be mean, but because he's teaching us. He's teaching us. And he's wanting us to stir up whatever that is within us that desires him. When it seems that he's not there, he's there. But maybe he's withdrawn for a little bit so that we will desire him. It's like, he's been here with me. Where are you? Where'd you go? He's there. Sometimes he withdraws a little bit so that we will desire him. As a deer out in the wilderness where there's no, there's no stream. And it's thirsty as the heart panteth after the water brooks. So panteth my soul after thee, O God. In Psalm chapter 43, the next Psalm, Psalm 43, verses 3 to 5. O send out thy light and thy truth, and let them lead me, let them bring me unto thy holy hill and to thy tabernacles. 
Then will I go unto the altar of God, unto God my exceeding joy. Is he your exceeding joy? I will go unto the altar of God, unto the God my unto God my exceeding joy. Yea, upon the harp I will praise thee, O God, my God. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God. Hope in God. For I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. Oh, David loved God. I wonder, how much do we love God? Do we seek after him as a deer, thirsty in a dry and weary land? Do we thirst after him? Do we hunger after his presence. Sometimes I think we don't until things get bad. Well, he loves it when we desire him. He loves it when we're desperate for his presence. He loves that. He loves that. And that is why from time to time he will withdraw. See, we should never take him for granted. We should thirst after him as a deer, panting after water, all the time. In Psalm chapter 23, I think we could all recite this one. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. His name. His wonderful name. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The psalmist David was called a man after God's own heart. He wasn't perfect. None of us are. But what he had that so few had, and even today so few have, was a heart that burned hot for God. A heart that burned hot for God. He loved God. He loved God's word. He loved God's house. He loved everything about God. Amen. He loved God. In Psalm chapter 122, verse 1, I quote it often. He said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Are you glad? When you get up on Sunday morning, are you glad it's Sunday morning? And do you think to yourself, I get to go to church today. Yeah! Is that your attitude? I hope it is. That was David's attitude. In Psalm chapter 27, verses 4 to 5, he writes... One thing have I desired of the Lord, that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. He wanted to go to church every day. I think we should put ourselves up against the measuring stick of some of these people in the Bible sometimes and just see how good a Christian we think we are, right? Uh, 
One thing if I did, did you say, where are we? Psalm chapter 27, verses 4 and 5. One thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. The presence of God was the fondest desire of David's heart. Is it the fondest desire of your heart? Do you seek after God like a hungry deer or a thirsty deer out in the wilderness? Who can't find any water. Where's the water? And he's seeking after the streams where he can, can quench his thirst. Psalm chapter 63. Are you with me still? Psalm chapter 63, verses 1 to 6. Psalm 63, verses 1 to 6. Oh, I love God. Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek after thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see thy power and thy glory. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Amen. Amen. To see his power and his glory in the sanctuary. We need churches like that today. Amen. They're few and far between, and that's why so few people today go to church. They figure, why bother? Because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips Amen. when I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches. Amen. David, on his bed at night, is thinking about God, is meditating on God's word. Just laying there at night on his bed. He loved God. Amen. He was a man after God's own heart because, not because of some, yet he was not perfect, but he was the man after God's own heart because he loved God. Amen. He was always seeking after God, meditating on God's word, desiring his presence. Is God the fondest desire of your heart? Is our Lord Jesus Christ your greatest desire? Is there anything that can satisfy you like Jesus? Is there anything you desire more than Jesus? His word, his presence in your life. Does your soul thirst after him more than anything, more than worldly wealth, more than life itself? Do you desire the presence of God? If you do, if you truly do, you will have it. Amen. I love you, Jesus, more than anything, more than anything. Jeremiah chapter 29 Verses 11 to 14, God says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Faith, faith. Then shall ye call upon me. And ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. 
And you shall seek me. And find me. When you search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord. Do you desire him with all your heart? As a man in a desert place. And you've run out of water. Do you desire him as you would desire water? I want us to think about this today. Are we desperate for God? I believe when God's people become desperate for him, want him more than anything, that nothing, nothing, nothing in their life is as important as spending time with God and meditating in his word and just glorying in his presence. When we want that more than anything, we're gonna get it. If you don't have it, you just haven't desired it. He says, if you seek after me, you will find me. He's never far off. He's always right there. If we desire him, if, if, our, if we lift up our heads and say, Lord, he's there. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, in the Beatitudes, we read, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. We seek his presence, we're going to get it. Now I ask you again, does your soul I'm going to ask you several times. I want us to think about this. Does your soul hunger and thirst after our Lord Jesus Christ? Do you love him more than anything? Can you not live without him? Do you thirst after his presence? After the deer that is in a parched and dry land. Are you desperate for Christ? I say, are you desperate for Christ? We read it earlier, Psalm chapter 1. I love Psalm chapter 1, and our family memorized it years ago. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. His delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Is that you? I ask again, is he your greatest desire? Do you love him and his word and his house more than anything? Are you desperate for him? When our devotion is toward Christ, when he is more important to us than anything else, some of those around you may become upset with you. They might. When your fondest desire is Jesus Christ. Some of the people you know may become upset with you. They say, what are you thinking about him all the time? What are you thinking about church and Bible all the time? What do you, come on, let's do, there's other things in life, they'll tell you. Is there really? No, think about, think about that. 
Yep, maybe there are other things, but are they important? Are they really important? Do you love him with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind? Some may become upset with you, but don't let that distract you. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Let's go to Luke chapter 10, and we'll read about someone who gave her entire devotion to Christ, and she was criticized. Luke chapter 10, verses 38 to 42. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a village and, certain, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. Talking about Jesus. She had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his words. But Martha was cumbered about much suffering, uh, serving, sorry, Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? The situation, if you don't get it, Jesus came to their house. Mary and Martha were the hostesses. Mary and Martha. Martha was doing all the work and Mary was just sitting at Jesus' feet. So Martha says to Jesus, don't you care that Mary left me to do all the work? That's the situation. <laughs> he said, she said, bid her therefore, bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, I love this, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. Listen to that. One thing is needful. I want to say it again. He said, Jesus said, one thing is needful. And Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. So Martha's fussing at Je to Jesus, not fussing at Jesus, but fussing to Jesus. Mary is just sitting at your feet. Would you tell her to get up and help me? Jesus says, she chose the one thing that's needful. If it's the one thing in our life that is needful. To thirst after Jesus. As the deer panteth for the water. We read again in John chapter 12, verses 1 to 5. John chapter 12, verses 1 to 5. Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair. You just got to love Mary, right? Yes. She loved Jesus. Whenever he was around, all she wanted to do was be at his feet, to worship him, to anoint his feet, and, and spread it around with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Beautiful smell, if you have ever smelled it. And then one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. He said, Why was this not why was not this ointment sold for three hundred pence and given to the poor? Again, Mary got fussed at. 
because she chose the one thing that's needful. The one thing that Jesus said is needful Amen. to worship him. Amen. Well, I'll tell you what, Mary has a, I'm sure, a wonderful spot in the kingdom of heaven. Amen. When the world presents its distractions, keep focused on the Lord Jesus Christ. Nothing matters more than Jesus. Nothing matters more than the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I ask you again. Do you hunger and thirst for him as a deer in the woods that is looking for a cool stream to drink from? Jesus said in John 7, 37, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Amen. Amen. Right. Once you've tasted of this precious, precious stream, you will never thirst again. You won't. Amen. You'll never thirst again. In John chapter 4, we're almost done. Are you still with me? Are you, getting the, are you getting the message this morning? Yes. Do you thirst after Christ are you desperate for his presence? Can you not live without his presence, his word, his house? John chapter 4, verses 1 to 15. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed into Galilee. And he must needs go through Samaria. Samaria was, if you, for those of you who don't know, Samaria was the capital of the northern kingdom of Israel. Amen. Jerusalem was the capital of the southern kingdom of Judah. But the ten tribes, their capital was Samaria. But Judah and Israel were kind of at odds. It's a long story. We don't have time for it right now. But they came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there, up in the northern kingdom area. Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. And there cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water, and Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me? Jew meaning Judean, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria. For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. As I said, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom were at odds. And they, there was this contention between the tribes. Verse 10, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that say, saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. <clears throat> the Samaritan woman, <laughs> Jesus asked her for some water. What are you asking me for water for? You, don't, you guys don't have anything to do with us. There was contention. Because, you know, God had said specifically, you, you worship in Jerusalem on the feast days. Well, they were up in, their capital was Samaria. See, the, the Judeans thought, you don't do it right. Right? You're not doing it right. It's supposed to be here. I get it, don't you? They had wandered off. 
So he's, she's just amazed that he even talks to her and that he's civil. Well, he wanted a drink of water. He said, if you had known the gift of God, he said this to her, if you had known the gift of God and who it is that said to you, give me to drink, thou wouldest asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. And the woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? He says, where are you going to get this living water? What are you talking about? Woo! Sounds good. I want some, right? Amen. Where are you going to get it? You don't have anything to draw with. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us this well? She was an Israelite. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us this well and drank thereof himself and his, Israel, and his, his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whatsoever drinketh, or whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up unto everlasting life. The woman said unto him, I think he convinced her. He was a very convincing fellow. The woman said unto her, him, Sir, give me this water. Give me this water. Give me this water that I thirst not. Neither come hither to draw. Give me this water. Give me this water. I want it. As the deer panteth after the water brooks, so longeth my soul after thee, O oh God. Give me that water. Do you desire him like that? Are you desperate for Jesus? When you are, you will experience him like you never have before. And that water, that living water that he offers will spring up unto everlasting life and it'll splash on others. I guarantee you that. Amen. Yes. Close with this one verse. John chapter 6, verse 35. And Jesus said unto them, I am... And he was the great I am, and he still is. Amen. I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Amen. As the deer panteth after the water brooks, so longeth my soul after thee, O God. As the deer panteth for the water. Amen. This altar is open for prayer as we sing our closing hymn. Thirst after him. Search for him. He's there.